Welcome to Real Flicks Reviews, or like a book club for people late reading. This month we're doing Robin Williams comedies, so uh, Ryan picked the movie Aladdin, made in 1992. We talk about Firefly episode 12, and we bring you movie news. This week we have Jonathan Charney, James Stevens, Ryan Preston, and the old guys here. So what's this uh, movie about, James? When a sea urchin... That's what they say, a street urchin. They literally say a street urchin. What Dude, the hell? You know you just reminded me of? What? You've seen Scrooge, right? Yeah. Yeah, the, one of the lines that uh, Bill Murray, uh, with one of the characters, thought he said sea urchin. <laughs> and he's like, well, I say sea urchin. He's a street urchin. Yeah, that's Sorry. what I'm thinking, though. It's street just so urchin. stupid. When a street yeah. urchin vies for the love of a beautiful princess, he uses a genie's magic power to make himself off as a prince in order to marry her. Why can't they say a street rat? A thief. I, again, it's it once, it once again, IMDB strikes with the worst description of a Let's film. Let's get that creative you can and pick a street urchin. Really? You know, my guess somebody, is somebody, they, somebody, they probably use interns to come up with all the uh, descriptions of movies. I think He's not are, getting I, a I, job. I think, these are done, I think these are actually done by, you know, normal everyday netizens. I doubt it. Well, somebody needs to maybe, fix that. Maybe. You uh, could be so, right somebody, somebody's getting paid for it, and it's not worth, you know, making By the way, that, that guy must have gotten a thesaurus for Christmas. So, you know, I have one thing to say about this movie. Yes. Only one I... Robin Williams meets the meets Aladdin or cartoons animation, and it's never the same since. That's really it. Yeah, I love I've I've I love the style how they did this because the um, I, I got to look on which way it came, but for the Beauty and the Beast, it's something very similar where it was traditional two D two D animation done over CGI, and I love the combination. Beauty and the Beast came out in ninety one. Okay, came yeah, out in so so Beauty and the Beast yeah, came before. It was kind of a version of what they were doing with uh, with Beauty and the Beast, but yeah, yeah. like I said, it's the t uh, 2D drawn images that are laid over this 3D background, and it, they they just figured out a way to sort of seamlessly make the characters move naturally in the uh, in the world, which is it made it look just different enough to where it doesn't feel dated at all with any of the artwork, you know? Yeah. And in uh, the one scene I remember in Beauty and the Beast was the ballroom scene. This one had a number of them, like the. The uh, Cave of Wonders, for, right. for example, was the first one that really hit. And just remember watching this as a kid going, wow. Yeah, Even they, now, I'm still wowed. I mean, it, it, it has dated a little bit, but it still holds up pretty well. I yeah, was actually quite is, surprised because I haven't seen this in years. This is actually also the first animated film to ever use a big-name star as an animation pickup, yeah. basically saying Robin Williams as he was billed. And he actually got very angry at the way they did that. Yeah, he fought against it pretty pretty hard. The original deal was it was like an uncredited kind of thing, like like my like he's like taking up like a real small portion of the of the poster, less than twenty five percent. And they totally turned around and banked on on the use of his name. And yeah, he it like ruined his relationship with uh, with the Disney company. Yeah, for, they even like, tried to give him a Pablo Picasso original. Yeah. <laughs> and he I, turned it down. And if I remember correctly, <laughs> back in the day, he got yet he just got went for Union Scale, which Union yeah. Scale is is nothing pittance compared to what he he could it's have gotten. The least that they can legally pay you for an acting job. I mean, so it was just something that he that he wanted to do, and he actually fit this in between uh, uh, shootings of Hook and I think Toys at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. But what was interesting to me when I was I was kind of looking it up, I didn't I never looked any of this shit up before I actually watched the movie because I just I wanted noticed. To, see it how i see it without oh that's where that is you know what i mean so uh but uh looking this stuff out up, up afterwards robin williams had 16 hours mm -hmm. of, yes like footage that they had used for the for the over. So imagine trying to cut that down over oh, they, see, it was, it was 960 minutes over the movie and all honesty, so that's plus 90 in all honesty, it was probably easy because half of it was probably very, very blue. He was a very dirty comic. Could you imagine being an animator for him, though? <laughs> Not. They probably taped him. Well, you know what's funny is the, one of the ways that they got him to, to agree to do it, he, he signed off pretty much immediately because the uh, animators had uh, basically taken one of his, his TV appearances of his yeah. stand-up and animated it using the genie. 
and then showed that to him so they can kind of use his voice I with it. S- and just like I'm in. I want to see that. Well, actually, the there's uh, two trivia things that they put up on IMDb about the street merchant scene, the opening scene, mm-hmm. and one of them was that they brought him into the studio. They had a blanket over the table that he stood in front of, and they told him to reach under the blanket and feel what's in there and describe it without looking at it. And the first take was way not PC for Disney. <laughs> and they had to throw it out. I want to, I want Disney to release those 960 minutes of yeah. Robin Williams doing this. Robin I mean, Williams. that would be amazing. Robin Williams has a joke somewhere, if I remember correctly, saying, uh, you know, the mouse doesn't have genitals. <laughs> um, I One of the things, I actually... I loved the the opening scene after the merchant scene. I liked that that chase scene because how well each gag went. Yeah, you know from from uh, the scene where he was spinning on that pole to transitions. This is one of the Disney scenes that went very well. Sometimes they don't always like yeah. mesh. Sometimes, right? Well, yeah. this movie was was kind of firing on on all good cylinders. And and Rob, really, I'm sorry for making you watch this, man. I, I know you're kind of probably great. Oh no, he team. was. We owe me big time on this one. <laughs> you, you know, this this is like next time you come down, you buy him steak. Uh, he was he was like, I'm gonna kill that. <laughs> oh man, I'm sorry. Yeah, I, I owe you. I owe you a beer. Um, uh, but uh, the trick but is getting him to drink it. For, for what this movie was, it was it was insanely good. The the story was really good. It was actually. I didn't even realize it until somebody pointed it out on, on, a, on a post. Um, it's not so much as the original story of Aladdin, but a lot of elements of uh, the Count of Monte Cristo. Oh, yeah. You know, in as much as the, the, the guy who wants the girl, who, you know, puts the guy in prison, who comes back and pretends to be a prince. But that's, uh, that, that's, that's an old shtick. I, I, I have a little bit of problems with that comparison a little bit because the main motivation in the County of Monte Cristo was, was vengeance. His thing, this thing was, I just want well, the girl. Yeah. Obviously it, was, it was sort of the Disney, Disney version of it. But, um, but the, the, <laughs> for being a musical, the songs were pretty freaking iconic. And this was, this was during the golden age, the second golden yeah. age of Disney. Because right. Beauty and the Beast, this, The Lion King, there were there were movies within a couple of years to, of, of each other. Just went boom, 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 and you know. And I mean, the music scores were done by really great people. Like, I mean, uh, The Lion King had Elton John, and they were billing the crap out of that. Right. And this one, they had they had to be upping the scores because of what they did with Beauty and the Beast the year before. Mm-hmm. There was at least uh, what two or three scores that they did in there. Yeah, and you had Angela were, Lansbury. Yeah seeing the ballroom scene of that one. So, you know, there was there were some big things that they were trying to do. And then they had to go and screw up all those movies with a- additional scenes. Disney, you're evil, die. So, uh, Oh, wait, you did. I like you know, one of the things oh, too best, you, know, you were talking about the 16 hours of material. <laughs> <laughs> oh, poor Walt. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. His head is spinning somewhere. There, there's so much property. ad-libbing. The only thing I'm going to say, my one little part here, is there's so much ad-libbing by Robbins in this movie that the script was turned down for Best Adapted Screenplay Academy Award. Yep. So that shows you that if you don't read it with some paper, you don't get the, you don't get the nomination. There, there, there are a few things. I mean, I don't mean to cut you off, Ryan. I don't know if you... <laughs> Um, you were okay. a little choppy there. If you want yeah. to repeat that, thank you, Skype. Uh, no, I was just agreeing with Rob. Ah. I, that, was, uh, that was a really cool little little fact I read. Yeah. That was that was really interesting. That was that was. I was gonna, gonna say this is where I, I start getting a little picky in a Disney movie. Yes, I'm getting picky in a Disney movie. Um, the one thing I always found funny is when the princess escapes, and somehow nobody notices she's the princess when she has that giant headband with a football sized jewel on her head, which she shows for a little bit. You think you'd go, oh, hey, I should, I know, chop her hand off. She's, um, well, her dad's the, you know? Yeah. Yeah, that, it, it reminds me of one of my favorite scenes in Monty Python, Holy Grail, when uh, the uh, Arthur walks by one of the peasants, and he's like, oh, uh, he must be, a, must be a king. He's like, how'd you know he's a king? He's like, because he doesn't have shit all over him. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> clothes are wicked clean. She's wearing really bright blue, and nobody, nobody bats an eye. Yeah. It's just not bright, bright blue. I mean, it's bright. It's like neon, you know, neon sign. Blue. I mean, I'm sure she didn't smell as bad as everybody else, too. 
right? Yeah, That's true. Exactly. I mean, actually, uh, one of the... Um, you do know we're talking about a animated film yeah. here. Well, use your imagination. Smell. It's it's in the middle of a I desert. Mean, I bet people don't exactly smell like roses. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, keep going. <laughs> so I, I what guess what are you doing over there? Oh, I, I guess I'll. I you guess wanted I'll, to see if we were streaming. I guess oh. I'll, I'll switch back to talking about my normal shtick. The colors in this movie I thought were interesting choice. Yes, yeah, so I was um, trying to find. There was one of the guys. Um, here it is, right here. Richard Vander Wend, the production designer. I probably botched his name. Whatever. I don't what are you care. Problem? Um, <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah. He uh, devised the color scheme. It was the the. Anyway, he devised the color scheme by actually going and looking at what the paintings and the the actual paintings and the colors of the areas that they were doing in the Middle East. Really? That's where that's he did his homework. So was it? Did, I'm, I'm there curious. was also another guy I was trying to find who traveled to back to Iran, his hometown, to get a feel for the actual layout of all the areas around it. I love that Anyways, town of Iran. So did they? I know, right? Did they actually got say the best food? Goat's great. <laughs> Travel the falafel. Um, did they say it's a location exactly where allegedly this Agrabah? I was, was supposed actually to be? trying to find it to see if he actually, uh, if the person who put this little trivia in there um, included that, but I'm not hmm. seeing it right now. Because I, I think I, the closest I, that I found was like, uh, like, like Sumeria or, or Syria. I think it was Syria. Hmm. Sort of next to Jordan and and that part of the Middle East, the Mediterranean Sea area. Because it's, it's the fictional location. Oh for yeah, that I was gonna area. say, isn't Sumeria what? like where Conan the Barbarian is? <laughs> Wait, what was that, Ryan? I said all I know is they got to Egypt really quickly when they took their little magic carpet ride. <laughs> and China, um, right? I, the, the colors in here I thought were, were interesting. You know, generally, you know, you have the obvious, you know, very bright, clean colors for the happy scenes and very dark, dreary colors for for the, the, the scenes with evil. There's a couple exceptions in that, um, like with the genie is singing in the, where you entered, when they introduce him. But with the 3D and the CGI effect, I, I thought the, the way they, they, they did that was, it pops very well, <laughs> even more so than I think other Disney movies with non- CGI. Yeah, I you know I don't yeah. think this one really was laying its back on their CGI that much. There was a lot of actual animation that really went into the film. Well, I think, uh, and I think that really adds stuff to it. I like the fact that these films, like the original ones before they re-released them in what like early late middle two thousand or something yeah. like that, that where they really botched everything up. The films before that, if you can actually watch them, they're still probably on VHS, not very many DVDs anymore. <laughs> but um, I think the way that they did them are really, really good. I think the CGI in this movie and in Beauty and the Beast was more like a plus. It was added to uh, the Genie's Cave. They added highlights, I think, and they, they, they made it pop more. It wasn't. It wasn't like Lord of the Rings or some of the modern movies or even Pixar's movies, which are all uh, animate, like computer animate. I think they've really enhanced it. I, I, you know, I think you could say it's kind of like what they did in Who Framed Roger Rabbit, but to the next level. Talking about the cartoons, at least. So it's basically the advanced version of Rotoscope. <laughs> Probably. Um, like one of the things of that the they were talking about movie. was uh, one of the guys who was doing Aladdin's pants. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. He actually watched MC yeah, Hammer MC videos Hammer. Yeah. <laughs> to figure out idea. how those baggy pants are doing. That was good. <laughs> if you don't know who MC Hammer is, shut up. Right, and, and, and YouTube it. Most people don't know about um, about artists when it comes to animation is you you really have to kind of study your. I mean, it's not like these people are just freehanding this shit. You right. have to really kind of know what you're making move around, and so they're the only example of baggy pants. Is, I mean, that is lucky that he had that example. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, well, exactly. I, That's what, kind of what I was thinking too. Yeah. Perfect timing. Because I mean, yeah, these are those, <laughs> one of his buddies who's you know wearing those pants one day, and he's like, just jump around the, the office here and jump around, yeah. jump around. Yeah. That's that. That's the wrong. <laughs> that's the wrong group. Yeah, same era though. Oh, wow. <laughs> it was a good idea. <laughs> um, I, but I, I have to say though, in these types of films, you were mentioning the scene where um, the chase scene. Mm -hmm. 
they put a lot of thought into the movements that oh, he's going to be doing yeah, 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 yeah. to do that instead of the old type of films where it's kind of like you got chump choppy and they kind of cut out sequences in the in the animation just so that it's like okay he's here and then all of a sudden he's here you're like how did he do that yeah like that, the yeah, transformers that, from the 80s yeah and that's kind of what i meant by well they say it, it fit really well in the flow of all the gags it wasn't gag 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 they they tied it in together here's a gag goes in a little bit runs goes another one i thought the flow on that was very well. I think it was one of the yeah. better ones for Disney movie. Well, the the genie song, the wish song. The you've never met a friend like me. Yeah. yeah. The the three wishes thing and that I mean <laughs> I have to give much credit to those artists oh, to keep seriously? up with Robin Williams like that. And he's talking and he changes his voice as one one joke to the other and the artist really tied it all in together so nicely that it just flowed. I would probably go as far to say, I think this was kind of Robin Williams' opus. This was like, this was his movie. Like if you ask for what movie kind of is on like Robin Williams unleashed clean, it would be this movie. I mean, that's, that's the rest would be the hundred or 960 hours. They haven't released. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, that's that's why I picked it in the first place. It, It really, it kind of encapsulated like everything that he's amazing at, like all the ad libbing, all of the, the crazy jokes, the mile a minute quick. I mean, you know, listen for the next joke, but don't laugh. You, you know, you're going to miss hear it. it. Yeah. Um, I, I mean, it was insane. I mean, even if they didn't bill him as the, the guy in this movie and throw his, you know, the big genie on the poster, it still would have been, you know, making $200 million because it yeah. was just so funny and so good. Because I think I think they had to bill Robin Williams on this because the the guy who played you know because the voice of Aladdin was the guy who played DJ Tanner's boyfriend in Full House, yeah. not exactly a name that's really gonna stick out. And he really like, hasn't done anything since. No. Like James said though, it's the first movie that they ever billed an actor as. Oh, make sure you watch this because this guy's doing the voice. Before yeah. that, it was just these people doing cartoon voices. Yeah, and it wasn't just with Robin Williams. It was like starring. I mean, it, yeah, yeah. absolutely. And it, and it really was. He completely stole the entire movie. But um, but really, the the story in and of itself is is kind of so good with just its its base elements. Of it's kind of fascinating with the the setting and then the the magical lamp and the genie and you know you throw in a good classic Disney villain. I mean, this is a movie you could make the dark version of today. You know, I like <laughs> I, I, you know what I mean? Yeah, no, I I do want to say since I know we've been giving glowing reviews about Robin Williams, I want to say the guy who played Jafar was the other the other actor, the other voice, the other to be character. Patrick Stewart, by the way. Yeah, it was, it was supposed to be, but. Uh... He, Star Trek took presidents. Yeah. And yeah. He, 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 apparently he regrets it. Um, yeah. He does. That's that, what he said. That's his biggest regret. Um, I, I, Jafar was Jonathan Freeman. I, Which I, was great. They should have, or uh, mm-hmm. shouldn't dim Tim Curry, but it probably would have skilled, scared children. Hmm. I really like that well, character. As long as you was, don't see him, he's not scary. He sounds Oh, yeah? Good. You should see some of his voice acting. I have. He's really good. Um, I, I, I really like the character of the Jafar. I think this is another character besides the genie that was very well hashed out, and I think that was more due to the design of the character than the actual, than the voice acting. Well, they, they were talking about his temper and what was more menacing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think they did okay for kids, you know. I mean, it I didn't really stick out to me like, ooh, he's a scary character. It's more like, ooh, your bird needs to shut up. But it's, it's I, I do find it funny <laughs> when they picked a very dirty comedian to... Oh, Gilbert to, Godfrey? As the, as the parrot, which I think that was the perfect choice, just, just because his he, voice fits. He's controllable. It's not oh, like yeah. a nine-year-old's going to go to a comedy club and be like, wait a minute, Iago, that's not, you know, right for you to say that. Yeah. Right? No. <laughs> what, 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 what happens is they grow up and 20 years later they see a Bob Saget act and you're like... And they're watching the aristocrats. <laughs> yeah. So, right. Um, so I, I guess I'll, I'll... I give this kind of a, a three out of five. I mean, I actually really like this, but there's parts of this that, that are a little slowish to me and... I just, it's not my favorite movie, but it, it's probably my, f- one of my favorite Robin's William movies. It, to me, it's still the three out of five, though. You're, I, well, this you're is all a- looking at me now. This <laughs> is actually a point, I would give it a 3.5, but um, since the two haven't given a homework <laughs> no, yet. No, we haven't. Mm-hmm. And you so, know, it, uh, give it to James. <laughs> 
poke me in the eye. If I put this up on scale of the Disney animation films that they put out, this one kind of sits at a four. Mm-hmm. Because it's one of those up there. It's not my all-time favorite, not the one that I like the most. But if if I just put it as just what it is, it's I gotta agree with you. It's it only stands up as a three, if I judge it on movies fil- style. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ryan. Okay, um, judging it sort of with the same criteria as 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 James, kind of, you know, as Disney as an entity. Um, obviously, the Pixar ones that they did much later on yeah. kind of stand above of the rest as is like transcendently good. But this being what it was, kind of a bridge of the the, the two worlds, like we talked about the three D and the 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 art. I, I'm an art fan. I mean, it's the reason that that Alice in Wonderland from like the 30s can still live up today is because it was just a really good story, cool, cool stuff. I think this one's going to be the same way. I mean, it's going to be something that a nine-year-old's going to watch in 2055, you know, uh, and for that, uh, definitely a four out of five, a strong four out of five. Do I put Beauty and the Beast on, on the scale of where you're putting Aladdin? If I was to choose, see, okay, but that's much more of like the 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 girl sort of fantasy kind of movie. This was something where there the princess wasn't the main character. This that's was true. Aladdin running around being a badass and has a genie. I mean, you know, I'm a boy. <laughs> Magic so, carpet. So, I like so the carpet. I'm a Rob, boy. <laughs> allegedly. Right. Wow. Yeah. Um, I think your nose got bigger. So animation in itself is not really my my cup of tea, but yeah, that doesn't mean that I can't I can't sit there and watch it and, and, and enjoy and appreciate it. it. And appreciate exactly <laughs> appreciate the work that was put into it. Because like Ryan, I'm I'm a I love art, and uh, you know, and there's no doubt about the fact that if you go, you know, you can buy them. Uh, and you know the old stills of some of the old cartoons, and they actually are beautiful pieces of oh, yeah, art yeah, yeah. on themselves. And, and I don't think this is any different than that. Um, I I'm going to give it a three. Uh, just just it's it's written, you know it's not the greatest thing I've ever seen. It's not the worst thing I've ever seen. I mean it's not Johnny Quest or something. like like that. It's a Saturday Way to show. burn John at the same <laughs> I, time. I love that. I, I was going to say, though, if you look at the Johnny <laughs> Quest cartoon, it was actually all hand drawn. So, so, so you got long. him defending it now. You see no, what I you do. did? I do. I do. But anyway, so for me, it was, I was a, you know, it was a three. So there you go. Uh, so we're going to switch off oh. to uh, Firefly episode 12 and shoot that over to. James. Okay, I guess I'll leave these out. Objects in Space is the one that we're on. And I actually think Ryan watched this one last week. Am I right, Mr. Ryan? (laughs) He's the one with the bounty hunter. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anyway, you know, I really, I enjoy this one in the fact that I like how sadistic this guy was. This is I mean, such a twisted piece. Oh, it, it, it I, was. Yeah. I just love it how was. River screws with Yeah, him. and I love the way that River screws with him. This is one of the and episodes that Later. when I first saw it made, gave me a big crush on Summer Glau just because of the way she portrays this film, the way she acts it out. It's just amazing the, the, how she's playing, but she's also dealing with the real issue yeah. of yeah. nobody wants her type thing. Well, you really get to see a little bit more of what they did to her. Mm-hmm. Yes. Okay. Yes. So you now now the story is built to a point where you go, oh, okay, they did all this stuff to her. We didn't really know what it was. It's a build up to this, and now we yeah. now we're really starting to see her yeah. ability to screw with people. Yeah. You know, <laughs> and, and the way she dealt with that guy. And I think this is this is another tidbit where you get to see how Ma- what Mal really thinks of her. Because you don't get to really see that. You see bits and pieces of his opinion. Because while well, he voices his opinion about protecting his ship and his crew, his personal opinion isn't, I don't think is as present as much. No. No. And, and they kind of handle that at the end when she asks permission aboard. Mm-hmm. Which was, uh, I thought that was a very interesting way to to kind of summarize that. And that's kind of actually where I want to leave off on this. I, I do want to say one thing. I love the interstellar-esque floating scene at the end. with the, the, the guy Yes, because that would so suck. Oh, one more. The yes. one thing I do want to say, I loud. did like his little quote there, is that I agree with him. All doctors need to be shot and stabbed before <laughs> they can become doctors. Just so you know what you're dealing with. He's got a point. He does. He's he really does. That was the one. <laughs> so, so, 
hey, they have to tase cops before they give them one. <laughs> exactly. And they, and you got to get mace. So, mm -hmm. so, yeah. so, so to do that, we're going to switch over to movie news, which is Ryan's thing if he if he did his homework this week. Um, he's trying to turn it in late. Movie news. Well, okay, well, I'll go first if you want. I'll go first What's if that? you want. I'll go first if you want. I have something. Oh, please, by all means, because all this shit is, is something, nothing that um, I'm even cause, interested cause in. I, I, I don't remember if we talked to it or not, but the guy who will be playing the Sorcerer Supreme, one of James and I's favorite character, has been officially picked. Uh, do you know who that is? Talking about Doctor Strange? Yeah. I think we did. The, 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 the BBC the, version, the guy who played Sherlock yeah, in the BBC? I think we did talk about it. I wanted to see what your guys' opinion is because I, I think oh, we might have talked about it a little bit. It's so good. I, you know, I'm not happy about it. Oh man, I, I think he's gonna be amazing. He's he gotta could be, better, be. He's gotta be better than he was in Con. My only role is if he's like Con. This movie's gonna suck out loud. Y yeah, well, I'm I, not. What was your What was your major problem with Con? He sucked because you're playing against you're you're, you're <laughs> playing against the guy who originally played. Con oh, with Montabon. Shit, have you watched that movie lately? It's not that brilliant. It, it's it's so bloody dated, and so is the performance. He, he I really, really does Mont have a point. I, well, I don't disagree, but I really liked Montabon as that yeah, role. It's early sci-fi. I think I he mean... could have gone. Uh, I think he could have gone darker and, in, in Star Trek: Edge of Darkness. Or what? Well, no, it wasn't Edge of Darkness. Yeah, it was no, the, it, uh, it was. Yeah. Was it Edge of Darkness? Okay, I no, also no, thought he I played know. the character a little stiff. And it just kind of dull overall. Yeah, I, just didn't I, like mean, the I thought he, I thought he could have gone a lot darker and had a little bit more life to him. He was really, yeah, that's a good way of putting it. Stiff. And he's a really good actor. Don't get me wrong. He's an amazing actor, but I just thought that role. And for he Khan didn't. Sucks. Hold yeah. on, Ryan. I'm not done yet. <laughs> and he did not play Sherlock that stiff. He played Sherlock like he was a go, you know, happy kind of go lucky guy that was just smarter and more of a jackass than everybody else. A psychopath right? or whatever. He said. Sociopath. Sociopath. Yeah. Close enough. But that's pretty much how he played Sherlock. Why the hell didn't he even add any of that to? Co okay, I'm just gonna get pissed off. But okay, so, but, but look, the, 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 bad the choice. Character, the character of Doctor Strange is is a pretty well fleshed out thing. He's he's kind of insane and moody. <laughs> For, for good reason, and moody as shit, and it's going to be interesting to see Ooh. that good of an actor take on <laughs> exactly the big red button. <laughs> no, no I, that's why I'm kind of excited, because I want to see... Because we'll <laughs> he just hit the big red button, actually. It actually is a big red button. Um, Sounds random. I didn't know what it was. You know, I actually kind of agree, because I could see him as Doctor Strange. I, I just really hope... Because his Sherlock character is is to me is a little is 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 a little a little mopey a little crazy. If he can play like amp it up a bit, I actually think it would be. Well, he could not send him, send him an not email. Him. He'll he'll take care of it. Well, no, because that's what'd you say, Ryan? I was saying it's not Sherlock playing Doctor Strange. No, no, no. It's I'm the just saying who plays Sherlock also playing a different character. Yeah, no, but what I'm saying is Strange. what what I was trying to say. Is the the way he plays Sherlock <laughs> is that way? So I think he he could play Doctor Strange very well, depending on the script and the direction he's given. Right, but it's going to be much more much more emotionally driven than. Oh, than do we Sherlock. have a director yeah. on this yet? Um, I thought we did. I nominate James Gunn. That would be awesome. Uh, give me one second. I actually oh Scott Dickerson. I don't remember. I don't What's know. he done? Well, what? Well, yeah, that's uh, where give me a second. Let me boot up. Well, IMDb. actually, I wanted to bring up something before we get too far over. Uh, Beetlejuice has been released and saying that yes, Tim Burton is actually saying that this is coming out. The second Beetlejuice. Yay! The idiot put this out before even talking to Michael Keaton. Oh. I mean, are you serious, Tim? It you're is, an idiot. I mean, did you actually Michael go and talk Keaton. to Johnny Depp? Well, he doesn't have to ask Johnny Depp. Johnny Depp would just automatically signs up. But I mean, I maybe he signed his soul over to Tim Burton. I but think is, he did. Is, uh, is what's his name? Um, is Michael Keaton in, involved, or is it just like speculative? There are. They're basically expecting him to say yes. He has. So I mean, he has so, said yes to doing it before. Sorry, I talked over you. What? Sorry. Right? I talked oh, over you. And it's just—it's been a really long time since we've seen him do a, like comedies. I mean, yeah, other than, than Birdman, which I mean, definitely 
has its has its elements, but not like a straight up comedy like Beetlejuice. No. So if you guys, if you, uh, you want to switch no, back ahead. to Doctor Strange, yeah, Scott Dickerson apparently is known for Sinister, The Exorcist of Emily Rose, Diller. Deliver Us from Evil and The Day the Earth Stood Still. I think that's the one with Keanu Reeves. He's also been a writer for, like, The Miso Soup, Sinister 2, Devil's Knot. So he pretty much does horror and one comedy. Hellraiser Inferno. Oh, two comedies. <laughs> Let's put it this way. They, they got a director cheap. Um, well, I mean, not necessarily. I mean, they have a director that has kind of a twisted eye, and, and yeah, the story of Doctor just... Strange is, is pretty, pretty dark. Twisted. Pretty yeah, dark and really... twisted. So, I, I mean, I, he, he no knows, I think he's going to know what project he's involved in, but it, it kind of needs that sort of really, really sick sort of look at things. Well, no, I think if he did Hellraiser, I think that Hellraiser kind of touch will definitely you, you help. You know, the Hellraiser Mono. palette, color palette that they had was really dark. That could work. Sorry. Is that a Fuzu Zelda? Yeah, uh, I mean, it's a, the Is that a reference to Candyman? <laughs> <laughs> it's dark. Uh, um, I like that movie. Jeez. Hey, so did I. That guy still freaks me out. <laughs> he freaked you out? I thought that thing was funny. So, <laughs> apparently before this show goes off rails <laughs> too much, um, next week pick is the original old guy, so... Me, huh? Yep, yep, yep. So all right, all right. So I, I, I thought and I thought and I scratched my head and I remember watching this movie in the theater and going, it was, it was kind of fun. So we're going to do Jumanji. Oh, wow. I'm down. And it's he's a... flipping me shit. <laughs> <laughs> no, this is vengeance. This is, you know, this is I'm going to get back at the we little bastard. We've up by, by two years of age. I, I picked a nine-year-old's movie. He picks like an 11 to 12-year-old's movie. There he could have gone with Hook. <laughs> I, you I, know what? It, they're both I wouldn't do Hook. Right there in my mind. I, I love them both. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's just a fun movie, and, and it's a good way, I think, to wrap up yeah. the group. So. And uh, we're going to do a Firefly episode. Is it 13? 13. And trash. Trash. And that's the last episode, trash. right? Trash, right? Trash. It's the last episode before the movie. Before the movie. Right. Um, uh, I don't think there's so a i so sure. I think there was another one. I may be wrong, though. Well, where he I was looking it up. But well, I had it up, and I closed it. While he looks it up, I'll just let everybody on remind you, after the, the, the official last episode of Firefly, T Firefly TV show, we'll be doing Serenity the Movie. Yep. Yes. So that were that will take over whatever the pick is, whether it's uh, one of our pick or the theater pick. No, we have the message after trash. So okay. there is one more. Well, there is four. So in a couple of more. Yeah. So after the message, wow. we'll be doing serenity. I'll be done. I thought there was one more. Good for you. <laughs> <laughs> and so, la ladies and gentlemen, I gave. <laughs> hopefully, there's a lady out there. I gave the movie Disney's Aladdin. Hi, Laura. A three out of five. <laughs> James gave it a 3 to 5. Ryan gave it a 4 to 5. Rob gave it a 3 to 5. Next week is Firefly episode 13. Yes, trash. Trash. And we'll be doing Jumanji for uh, the next week's pick. Yeah. And as always, we'll see you next week. Goodbye. <laughs>